Hey everyone, I'm Devin, your friendly neighborhood board gamer, and this is Devin Talks Tabletop, the YouTube channel where the games are made up, what I say doesn't matter, and today I am doing a video that is long overdue. And it's long overdue in the sense that I love talking about this game, and I'm excited that I finally get to in a little bit more depth or conversation about some of the things that excite me the most. If you have seen the title for this, this is me spending time and energy to upgrade and deluxify my favorite game of all time, which is Forbidden Stars from Fantasy Flight Games, which is set in the Warhammer 40k universe. This to me is just an absolute masterclass in area control, objective hunting, and man, space combat with a lot of other flavors and asymmetry going into it. This is my favorite asymmetric game. And it is only ever been the base game, at least officially, and it never had any expansions that came out for it before the Warhammer license uh, moved on away from Fantasy Flight Games, and so it was kind of by itself. But I have done some efforts to upgrade and make this nice and cozy for all of the delicious pieces in it, and I've also recently upgraded by getting the fan-made expansion Galaxy in Flames. I'm going to talk about how I've deluxified it, I'm going to talk about what's in here, I'm going to talk about all the new things that I've got, <clears throat> and in the meantime, I'm going to give some shout outs to where I got some of this, and then also just glowingly discuss how much I like Forbidden Stars. So, thank you for being here. I added, I added, I added, I added some high pressure water to old tea and it left it foaming, so it feels like I'm drinking tea beer. Timestamp. If you're new to the channel, thank you for being here. I appreciate all the support that I've been getting, and you guys are wonderful people, and I'm thankful that you stopped by to check out what was going on. But if you've been here for a while, if you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much. You guys are awesome. This community has made me doing this so much more fulfilling than just me talking to myself, which I'm getting pretty good at, to be honest, and it probably is going to worry family and friends. I'm going to shift aside this expansion stuff for a moment to bring front and center the base game. And when I say I've been upgrading this game, I'm not talking about uh, just the expansion stuff. I've also done things to make this much nicer and prettier. So what I did in the very beginning when I first bought this game is I was starting to sleeve and take care of stuff. So with the base player boards, these are the three main characters or the four main factions. These are the four main factions that you have in the game. These are the Orcs, the Eldar, the Chaos Space Marines, and the Space Marines, the four base factions that you get. I have done quite thick lamination on these to where uh, you can put pieces on it, you can move them around, you can flip them, and they won't get damaged very, very easily um, like they could be if they were just a regular cardstock. This is an organizer, which I'll get to in a second. You've got your rule books, your learn to play, your rules reference. And in here, I have a three tray system, I think it's three trays, from Feldherr. So Feldherr is, I think, a German company. Um, I know for sure they're European, I'm pretty sure they're German. And they do custom foam inserts for a lot of games. I have their inserts also for my uh, Star Wars Rebellion game, which I enjoy that a lot. And what it does is instead of, if you are familiar at all with the Fantasy Flight cardboard trough, you know how miserable it was when you get most of those games from that time period to organize any of it. This, however, gives a lot of custom space so you can get all of your ships minus their um, standees that they go on top of. You have stuff like the bastions and the cities. And so this has, you can see in the top down, you've got two different colors. You've got the yellow and the green. So this is, the yellow is the Eldar forces and the green is the orcs. One thing I like about these miniatures is even though um, they kind of have a older, uh, very malleable plastic on some of the thinner pieces that bend depending on uh, the age and also just from the very get-go they might bend, is that because they're all in a separate color, it doesn't make it very easy to distinguish on the board. I think some people like their miniatures enough to where they go ahead and they paint all of these to make them more realistic to the colors of the factions. I don't really ever have any intent of doing that because I actually like the visual distinction on the board. But this is just the first tray, which has got some of the orcs, some of the Eldar, and then some of the base buildings where you've got your factories, your bastions, and your cities. So that's the first tray. The second tray here has red and blue. So these are the Chaos Space Marines and then the regular Space Marines. And once again, just separates out all, all, all the small units, all the larger units, and then the ships and the heavy like tank or um, ground forces there. 
So second tray here has got another set of factions. And as you can see, just very nicely kind of spreads it out to where it's easy to um, differentiate. The next thing that is, obviously I sleeved all my cards. Um, if, if a game will fit that size of card, I always try to go for these Dragon Shield Clear Classic. These are like my favorite sleeves that I've used personally. And if a card will fit in it, even if it's a little bit smaller and not a perfectly tight fit, I still like these Dragon Shield Clear because um, I just like how thick they feel and how firm they feel in terms of giving my cards protection. In this next tray that we have here, I have several different things. So I've got the cards and all of these are the combat cards and the order cards and the order upgrades. And these are all sleeved, but then I've got two other upgrades that I've shown. And so I can, anything that I talk about that I've gotten, I'll, I'll put links to in the video description to where you can see it. Um, but a couple people actually, um, I reached out to them with the intention of shouting them out in the video. Uh, these rubber protectors were not one of them, uh, but I'll still try to give the link in the video description. I'll go back and find it on Etsy. So part of the thing about uh, this game that is one reason why I wanted to protect it so in intently is all of the pieces are cardboard uh, punch outs in terms of tokens. And just given the way that you use them in this game, like these are, for example, are the order um, or the structure tokens that signify what structure belongs to which player or which faction. And buildings are placed on top of these, which means you're going to have rubbing against that. And then also, um, just o o over time, the cardboard is going to degrade a little bit if you're not careful about it. So all of these uh, tokens here, I have rubber protectors on all of them to where the only thing that's going to affect them is if there's something physically on top of it, like the building. And even the smaller tokens here, I have all of these in nice rubber protectors. Now these rubber protectors, which I have on the objective tokens, I have them on the uh, like cash and resource tokens. I have them on the uh, building uh, faction tokens. I even have them on the first player marker. Other than those, there is also rubber protectors that go around the order tokens. But the order tokens are so heavily used in this game that I actually went and I ordered from a site called the Polto Polteva Game Shop. And so um, I'm going to have a link to them, Polteva Game Shop. He does these plexiglass tokens, which means you're not going to have that surface level of the art on the cardboard getting degraded and they they you know are going to be able to stack on top of each other and they're not going to scratch and wear away the top of that. And the reason why these are the tokens that I was so adamant about protecting and other people have their own solutions for Forbidden Stars. Uh, I know a lot of people will use like those plastic coin counters. I just didn't like that as much because it felt like it made it so thick when you started to stack them on top of each other because of all the chunky plastic. This is a hidden order game or a hidden action game where players will place down these tokens on the board and they may be stacked multiple players or the same player on top of each other and then you resolve it in top-down order. So your orders might be layered over and blocked by other players until they've used their action in that sector. And so because of that action of you're constantly holding them and you're, you're touching them because you're looking at the back sides of them to determine where you want to go and where. So you've got a lot of like finger oils that are rubbing over it. And then when you're placing them, you're getting them, uh, you know, contact scratching on top of each other. And that may sound trivial for most games, but in this game, if you have an identifiable like scratch or scrape or loss of um, the cardboard, you could then know what that token is. And that is a huge like betrayal of information in this game. And so if you know that your opponent has got an advanced token because you know that that is the um, uh, like deformity or marring of that token and you're aware of that, that gives you information you shouldn't have. And so it's very important to me to where you have this uh, hidden as well as possible. So this was the first big upgrade besides like regular sleeving and these rubber protectors is I got these from Polteva Game Shop and these are like plexiglass tokens and I have those for all four of the base rate uh, base factions. I also got them for the Galaxy and Flames expansion which I'll show off in just a second. 
But I think these are fantastic because they do exactly what I want to and they still have the distinctive original art on them, but I don't need anything as bulky as the original tokens inside coin counters. And that's additionally important to me because some of my original ones are already damaged just from frequent play of the game. So, character trays for the base factions, and then this is probably the heaviest tray, like just because of all the card weight in it, and so I'll try to get this out as gently as I can. Now I'll slide this over here. Those are all the cards. And then underneath here, we have the larger uh, troops, which are the biggest ground forces you can have. We have those for all four of the factions. And then we have all of our ship standees, which kind of elevate the ships and get them off of there. And then we have some more of the pieces that did not fit in the original stuff. And then you've got the round tracker, the warp storm uh, markers, and then you've got all of the main system tiles that go along with this game, which are all double-sided and have home worlds for each of the factions and then have other tiles that are going to be built out because once you've played the game, you know, one or two times, you're not really supposed to be using the initial starting map anymore. You're supposed to be building out your map, which is an entire strategic phase <clears throat> to the game in its own right. So you have the bottom tray here, which has got the system tiles, and it's also got uh, the leftover miniatures that did not fit in the original trays. And then on top of that, I have layered the heaviest one, uh, which has got all of the cards and all the tokens and dice. And then you've got these pieces here. So it does create some box lift, um, which I know that there are some people that box lift really bothers them. But in terms of what I value, I am much happier that I feel like all of these are protected and secure without having to worry about, um, and the Felder foam also comes with a nice little thing that shows you where everything goes. And they, th this is a company that has foam organizations for a ton of games. But um, this one and Star Wars Rebellion were ones that because of the number of miniatures that go into it, it's just definitely one that I wanted to protect because it's my favorite game. So this is the base game. This is how I've deluxified it. I've got a foam insert that's custom. I've got card sleeves everywhere. I've got rubber protectors for the cardboard tokens. I've got plexiglass tokens for the main hidden orders. And then I've even got um, something else that I've said that I can't remember. Anyways, that's, oh, oh, lamination for all of the things that are laminated. So that's the base game. And that brings us to the new game that I've got here. So I'm gonna bring this over here. This is Galaxy in Flames. This is a fan or you know unofficial expansion. You can get in on reprints for this on Board Game Geek. You can get access to the threads that are there and they have group orders that occasionally go out when enough people want it. Um, I don't know the frequency at which they're going to continue to do that because this game is out of print and so it's hard to find a copy of it. And since it's hard to find a copy of it, you know, the amount of times that they need to do a print for a fan expansion, you know, is probably a finite amount. But this is the uh, fan expansion Galaxy in Flames, and I have already started the process of deluxifying some stuff. This is actually the leftover order tokens um, from the game, which I've already upgraded. And then you can see that, where are they? Where are they? Here they are. So this is the new set from Polteva Game Shop. So I reached out to them and I was like, hey, I, I need what you guys have got for this set as well. So they have sent out um, these awesome plexiglass tokens for the four new expansion factions, which are the Tyranid, the Iron Legion, the Tau, and then the, ooh, what's the other one? What's the other one? Iron Legion. Let me see. The, oh, oh, of course. The Necrons. So these are the four new uh, factions that are coming into the game. I have once again taken these faction sheets and laminated them. I will say that while some of the component quality of this like uh, faction like expansion for the that the fans made Galaxy and Flames, while some of the production level isn't as you know standard as like a full on production copy of a game, um, a lot of the artwork is pretty great. And once you start to 
um, upgrade it or, you know, protect it, then I think that it is going to kind of stand side by side with the main stuff. So I'm excited. So I, once again, I got some thick laminate for these. You have the Necrons, the Tyranids, the Imperial Guard, not the Iron Legion, Imperial Guard, and then the Tau Empire. So these are the four new races. If you're familiar with Warhammer 40k, then these names will probably be you know, familiar to you. The Tyranids I'm familiar with because I played Space Hulk Death Angel and they are the primary enemy that you're fighting against there. The Necrons I'm familiar with because I've played um, Warhammer uh, Adeptus Mechanicus, which is a like real-time strategy turn-based game um, where they are the primary enemy that you're facing there against the um, engineering arm of the Space Marines or the Ultramarines the Adeptus Mechanicus. You've got the Imperial Guard here, and then you've also got the Tau Empire. Uh, and so these are the four factions that you've got in this. And um, just like in the other game, I have got the cards that um, go along with them. And while the artwork is there, like the card quality is probably a little bit lower than what you have over here. But as soon as you sleeve it, which is what I did as soon as I got it, I got some Dragon Shield sleeves. And went ahead and sleeved them, and to where you know I don't feel like there's going to be much any difference uh, mentally or visually whenever I'm working through stuff like this. I was very happy with how this fan expansion went, and I, you know, taking a game that has only four factions and giving it four full new factions when you're talking about asymmetric play and how all of those factions play against each other, I'm really excited to see how that functions. So I've got the Tau, and I've got the Necrons in here, and I've got the Tyranids and the Imperial Guard in there. And so that's definitely how, you know, I started off. Um, as soon as I got this, I went ahead and sleeved both of these decks. And I've laminated the player factions. I'm going to show those off at the very end because I'm the most excited about those because they just came in. I've got all the other tokens here, regular tokens that are going to be in use here. Um, the one thing that I have for sure um, already done is with all of the rubber protectors that I had. I've added all of those to it. I've got the dials. So these are just all of the pieces that go along with the game, the components. And then as I mentioned, these are the plexiglass upgraded versions of the order tokens to replace the cardboard ones. And those are Pulteva Game Shop. And then, oh man, showing off some of the exciting stuff. These are the sectors which, you know, go along with the sector tiles there. These are the four uh, additional ones that go along as home worlds. So those are set up. And then the introduction of the new components, rule clarifications, and then what the factions bring in. This is the single page rule reference that you get along with this new expansion because you have all the base rules from the original game. And that brings us to one of the things I'm most excited about. Now, if you get the fan expansion for Galaxy and Flames, there's also another one called, like, I think Darkest Dawn, I think is the name of it. But this one is Galaxy and Flames. And if you buy this, there's two options of how you buy this. You can buy it just plain, which is how I did, without any units, or you can buy it with standees. And essentially, those are like cardboard standees that you put in little plastic holders. And so it just creates a 3D visual representation of the units, but it is very much a, makeshift isn't the right word, but a rudimentary solution alongside when you're seeing the miniatures of the original game. So, in addition to the tokens from Pulteva Game Shop, there's another Etsy dealer called Blue Arrow 2. And Blue Arrow 2, again, I'll add the links into the video description to where you guys can check them out if you want to. Blue Arrow 2, I believe they're based in Greece, they offer 3D printing of the miniatures and that is something that I was interested in. And while it is a pricier alternative to getting your hands on these, I knew that it was probably the right decision for me because number one, I don't have, I have the money to sink into a 3D printer, um, but really not the space or time or additional money that I know I would then continue to sink into it. And these miniatures, um, from all the research that I've seen of all of the different ones that have been shown off, actually do a pretty fantastic job of getting exactly what you need um, from the game. All of them have quite good detail in terms of the printing that to me make them within 
uh, pretty pretty close uh, pretty close comparison or contrast to the original miniatures. And you know, depending on what person you go to, what files you use, what printer you have, they're, they're, you're going to get different results. But I was pleased enough with what they offered here that I knew that it was the right decision for me. And um, you know, 3D printing takes a long time. It is quite a bit of effort. Um, and so I'm going to open up some of these other ones so that you can probably see them maybe a little bit better in other colors. I know that the black that I put on the dark background is not super helpful. And I can potentially take some close-up pictures of these to where in editing I can kind of show them off to you uh, and try to kind of like clip those into here if I have the mental reminder to actually do that. Um, but these miniatures, you know, in terms of size, in terms of details, you do see like the remnants or the evidence of it being 3D printed. But honestly, like the details that you get on the miniatures here are pretty great. And in terms of how close they get you to what you have from the original game, I'm pretty pleased. So I have all four factions here. I've got the Necrons, I've got the Tau, I've got the Imperial Guard here, which, you know, just like the Space Marines, they also have tanks. And they also have like, you know, the larger mechs that you're going to you're gonna see there. And then additionally, the last one are the Tau. And so, you know, you've got all of these different crazy freaking figures based off of the people that you have. This is, you know, one of the uh, ships that you've got. And so between the Tau and, you know, between all four factions, I just, I, I knew that this was going to be the better decision for me to go ahead and get these 3D printed and... I'm pleased with what I've seen um, in these miniatures. I'm super excited to get a gameplay done. But this is definitely, these miniatures alone are the heftiest upgrade that I've done to the game because they cost a lot. I mean, it costs a lot of time to print these and then to you know prune any of the sprues or any of the extra little pieces off of there to where it's just the visual quality of the miniature that's left rather than evidence or, you know, um, physical pieces left over from the printing. So there's a lot of time and energy that goes into making these and therefore the cost that I, that, that you pay to get them is, is substantial compared to, um, other solutions. But th this is the biggest upgrade I've done for the game is not even just the expansion, but the miniatures that go along with the expansion. But I really liked the fact that it was different colors, which once again goes along with the different colors here. It's going to be very easy to see on the board. And now I've got a complete setup of four full factions to go along with the base game. So, yeah, th this is Forbidden Stars. It's my absolute favorite game. Um, it's just, it's so, so well done. And I can't wait to see how these new factions play into the overall experience when you go ahead and get them on the table. My goal is to play this at Thanksgiving for sure. Uh, if I get a game in before then... I will be super stoked, but I know that um, my cousins and I and my brother and stuff, we have a plan to hopefully play this while we are at Thanksgiving. I can't wait because all of us really, really enjoy the game and have a lot of love for it. And so the idea of getting to test it out and see these new expansions and how they play is, is really, really cool. So I'm looking forward to it for sure. But... This is not for everyone, and I'm not talking about Forbidden Stars. I'm talking about the amount of effort I've gone to to take care of this game and also improve the experience of it. It is a lot of time. It is a lot of money. Um, you know, I could have bought numerous amounts of other games with the amount of money that I've put into this one. But I, I really do love this title, and you know, I have such a soft spot for when it came to me and my time in getting into the hobby, and then also how much it stands up the test of time in terms of like when I played it recently, you know, I, I, there was a span of time in which I hadn't played it for a while. And then I taught it to Alex and we didn't get to finish a full game, but we taught it and I still enjoyed it a lot. And he saw the, the, the merits of it. And then I also played a full game at origins with Max uh, and Kyle from table knots and foster the meeple. And the three of us had a blast playing through it. And uh, subsequently, uh, Max got his hands on a copy of it and still hasn't called it yet, which I, I think that's impressive for Max not to have called it yet. So I really love it. If you have any questions about the game, if you have questions about the expansion, if you have questions about Polteva Game Shop for the tokens or Blue Arrow 2 for the miniatures, if you have anything that you want to know, 
be sure to reach out and give me a shout out and I'm happy to try and answer what I can. But my goal is to get a gameplay of this up on the channel at some point, but it would probably make sense more at Alex's house or at um, Play the Game HQ. This setup just isn't really well suited to a big old game like this on the table. So I'm going to try and get a gameplay of this done. Uh, we'll see when that happens. But I appreciate it, guys. Hope you have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Bye.